want to tell you how a puppet master killed a well-loved man called Jamie Fate. On October 9th of 2020, Jamie Fate, an American airline technology director, was shot several times before his wife while they were walking their dog in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. CBS News noted that Jamie was shot three times to the head, three times to the chest, and once on the groin. Not only that, Jennifer, his wife, was rubbed by the and duct taped over her wrist. Melinda Mendoza, the couple's neighbor, heard the sound of gunshots and a woman's voice screaming. She quickly called the police to notify them that something horrible was happening in their neighborhood. The mother of Jamie came as a shock to all residents. Everyone who knew him could attest he was a fun-loving guy, so it made no sense that he was murdered, what's more, in broad daylight. The Dallas police interrogated residents at Oak Cliff from house to house, hoping to find useful information. They discovered the killer drove a black Nissan Titan pickup with a tea deco at the back window. The deco gave away the killer's identity and many were sure that the killer belonged to the baseball team, the Texas Rangers. Jennifer revealed to the cops that the killer wore a blue mask. The security camera near the couple's house only captured a blurry image of the killer, so the best bet to identify this person was through the T on the back window. Although many neighbors didn't know the couple personally, they supported Jennifer and her daughter, Amber. Jennifer Slevin, a resident at Oak Cliff went far ahead as to open a GoFundMe account for the bereaved. The GoFundMe campaign generated over $60,000. Everyone in the community felt Jamie's death was something that could have happened to any of them. The widow appeared to be traumatized by the event. She went live on TV begging that her husband's killer should be identified and punished by the law. On December 2nd, a news report that featured Jennifer noted a heart-wrenching statement she made. She said, The guy just kept shooting and shooting. I just hope that at some point, maybe this person can recognize the gravity of what they've done and feel some sort of guilt enough to come forward because I'm not supposed to be widowed at 48, you know? I am not supposed to be widowed at 48, you know? However, Jennifer wasn't having it all. She kept pressing for the police to catch the culprit because she needed closure on a news report. She said the truck is absolutely critical. Somebody has got to know whose truck this is. It's a black Nissan Titan extended cap. It has a Texas Ranger sticker on the back window, so it's not hard to identify. Christy Jack, a prominent defense attorney, after reviewing the case, concluded it was a hit. He knew that this case was special. Detectives were already digging around to gather enough evidence. They were also looking into Jennifer's background, as they do with homicidal cases. It was normal. They asked for her cell phone and found that in April 20, six months before the October shooting, Jennifer had texted a friend to say she had gotten back in touch with an ex-boyfriend named Darren. This ex-boyfriend, Darren Lopez, has a family of his own. However, he was going through a divorce. He lives in Tennessee with his two daughters. Lopez was a Special Forces Army veteran who earned a purple hat and suffered brain injury from a roadside bomb in Iraq that killed 19 soldiers in his unit. The detectives discovered Lopez owned a 20-acre property in Cumberland Finance, Tennessee. Not only that, he also owned a Nissan Titan truck. This discovery made the detectives realize there was more to the case. Hmm. Texas authorities reached out to the Tennessee authorities and requested surveillance of Darren's house. Tennessee authorities did aerial surveillance of Darren's house and discovered he owned a Nissan truck with a T at the back. This discovery confirmed something. The killer was not a baseball player after all. The T signified University of 
Tennessee. If you remember earlier, I mentioned that Jennifer and Lopez only connected six months before her husband was shot. Lopez had not met Jamie before, so what could be his motive here? Did he want to rekindle his relationship with Jennifer after her husband's death? Or was it Jamie's properties and money he was after? His motive remained a mystery to the law enforcement, so they continued to dig further. Jamie had about $629,000 life insurance, which Jennifer had been clamoring to collect. But the detective refused her access to it because she hasn't been ruled out as a suspect. And, and the way she was carrying on in this case just made them keep watching her from a distance. Let's not forget, she had also set up a GoFundMe which already had $60,000. So where did all that money go? Well, it all went to Derek Lopez. So after her husband's death, she began showering him with gifts. The $60,000 was exhausted in both two months. She sent Lopez cash to a Venmo account, bought a plane tickets for him and his daughters, and also allowed Lopez to use her credit cards. In an email she wrote, please don't hesitate to use them for whatever you need. Now this is a woman who just lost her husband and here she is lavishing money on her ex-boyfriend. In a mail she wrote, here's both of my major credit cards. Amex has no limit and I think the visa has like $35,000 limit. I pay them both off every month so you need not to worry about them being declined. Why is she doing this? Why is she handing this man all this money? Well, we'll get to it. Jennifer was extremely generous to Lopez. It made sense that he shot Jamie to achieve this. Or oh, don't you think so? Well, there's more to know. The detectives discovered Jennifer and Lopez were in communication daily. Sometimes they communicate more than 500 times a day. That's weird if you ask me. What's even weird was that on the 8th of October, both of them stopped talking for some reason best known to them. Maybe because the day was special for Jamie and Jennifer, it was the 15th anniversary of their first date. Well, Lopez, on the other hand, went out of town on a hunting trip according to what he told his daughters. His debit card records showed he stopped at a gas station near his home to get gas and then set his GPS for Jennifer's house. The trip, which would take about 10 hours, was said to be a long walk. But why would an ex bother to go such lengths? Apparently, Lopez had been receiving mails from Jamie. In the mails, Jamie talked about how he would sexually abuse Jennifer and harm her. The detective found a large chunk of emails that claimed Jamie was abusing Jennifer. That explains why Lopez shot Jamie at the groin. One of the mails read, Enjoy knowing you can't do a fucking thing about it. It was extremely taunting. Jamie was presenting himself as some god that could trample on Jennifer's dignity and pride, and to even her so-called ex, who couldn't lift a finger. Jenny was provoking Darren Lopez and it didn't make sense why. Guess who was sending Lopez these messages? Another thing the investigator noticed was a second mailer who happened to be one of Jennifer's male friends. That friend's email verified Jamie was abusing Jennifer. The second mailer sent pictures to Jamie showing Jennifer's brutally injured body and asking Lopez to help in any way he could. Someone was orchestrating something here to get someone upset so that they could murder someone. Do you get the picture? So here is what Lopez wrote to the friend. I know I won't feel better about her situation until she is away from him or she lets me put a bullet in Jamie's head. I keep offering and she keeps telling me no, L-O-L. In January of 2021, three months after Jamie Faith was murdered, Dallas detectives discovered evidence including thousands of text messages that suggested Jennifer and Darren Lopez had a connection. On January 11th, he was arrested and the police found the mask which Jennifer described as well as the gun in Lopez's house. Darren Lopez was charged with a gun crime at federal level and at state level. 
he was charged with murder. Despite the evidence being slapped at his face, he pleaded not guilty to both charges. So he was transferred to Dallas County Jail where he was held on $1 million bail. On the day of Lopez's arrest, Jennifer was summoned by the detectives for questioning. So she had no clue about what happened to Lopez. During the questioning, Jennifer claimed she wasn't in a sexual relationship with Darren Lopez, but admitted they committed, they communicated every day. On the surface, it may seem like it was normal since she was grieving, but outstanding messages pile up to 116,000 times. I mean, you can't just message someone that much if you're not close to them. What exactly were these two talking about? Now, this brings us to this question. If Jennifer was truly being molested, why had she not reached out to the police? Why was Lopez being instigated to do something instead? Something is not quite right. Don't you agree? On February 24th of 2021, Jennifer Faith was arrested and charged with obstruction of justice. Remember, the T on Lopez's truck sold out his identity, right? That made Jennifer scared. She texted Lopez, something is eating away at me, telling me you need to take the sticker out of the back window of the truck. Lopez responded, sticker done. Jennifer replied, oh yay. Then much later, I feel so much better. This is what she was telling Lopez in a text message. Was Jennifer somehow involved in her husband's killing? Why was she bothered about the tea sticker? If you remember, some time ago, I shared a story about a woman who attended her funeral after her husband's successful ploy to kill her. You can check the link of the description of the video to watch it in case you haven't seen it. However, in the case of Jamie and Jennifer, it appears the killer was present at his funeral. Seven months after Jennifer was charged with obstruction of evidence, the prosecutors managed to figure out one thing. The emails Jamie sent to Lopez were not sent by him. The second mailer, Jennifer's male friend, was a fake identity created by someone to instigate Jamie to take action. But who could that be? It was Jennifer's fate all along. Thankfully, Jennifer's Oscar performance did not confuse the detectives and make them rule her out as a suspect. In September 2021, the detectives had enough evidence to prove Jennifer was connected to Jamie's killing. Lopez never sold her out all along, which is very surprising. The emails, including payments, gifts, and conversation with Lopez, was enough to charge her with murder for hire, which is a federal offense. But why did she carefully plan all these things? creating fake people, sending stock images to instigate her ex. On February 7th of 2022, Jennifer appeared in a Dallas courtroom and pleaded guilty to word of the death sentence charge. Apparently, she is too scared to die. Prosecutors waived the death penalty and settled for a life sentence instead. So Jennifer also revealed Jamie never abused her either physically or sexually. So why did she do all these things? Surprisingly, Jennifer didn't pay Jamie's funeral. In fact, she owed about $6,500. Jennifer doesn't seem a bit remorseful about everything. I mean, after everything, why would she dare to ask the court to put $200,000 from Jamie's estate into her prison commissary account? But most importantly, she lavished all that money on her ex but couldn't pay for her husband's funeral, the man she killed. Jennifer not only robbed the community of a good man, but also her daughter and her father. Jennifer had been described as a puppet master that had her hands wrapped around Lopez, who carried out her bidding without a second thought. Well, the world is a strange place, and sometimes stories like this make it tough for good people to help others. Be sure to watch out for manipulative people like Jennifer. They are out there, everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please hit the subscribe button so that you can get more updates from me. Don't forget to like this video and also follow me on TikTok at Stories with Oluchi where I share short videos, three minutes or less.